Good morning or afternoon or wherever, whatever time it is where you are right now. Good morning and hello, 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 and uh, welcome to this surprise stream that I'm doing today because I wanted to celebrate almost 100 uh, Twitter followers, and that's just amazing. So uh, welcome everybody. I hope that you're doing all right. Let's see who's actually here today. A1 Bear. Haven't seen you before. Who, who are you? Say hello in chat. Right. So, for today, I wanted to create a, uh, a chatbot for my for my Twitch stream. Ooh, <laughs> maybe we should ignore that one. Um, that's actually my bot that I created yesterday. And today I'm just going to walk through uh, what I did and then um, hopefully uh, we'll create some fun little things for the bot to do together. So, um, so yeah. Um, Aren't anybody online today? Just going to see what I can find here. Okay, so um, yesterday I uh, figured out, I was told about this uh, TMIJS uh, library, which is basically just a small library that allows you to, um, oh, let's just um, get Firefox up here. It's a small library that allows you to uh, create, uh, listen in on chat, uh, events from the Twitch uh, Twitch chat, and it allows you to uh, send events to the Twitch chat, which basically means you can listen on what people are saying, and then you can uh, respond to it, or you can just send messages, just like uh, just like what I did with my uh, with my uh, Flufendorf. That's the name of the uh, of the bot. So. What I want to do, uh, no, let's just see first the uh, the TMIJS uh, page so you can see where to get it. There. And this is this is just the uh, NPM page that tells you a few things about uh, how, how the very minimals of how to use it. This is actually not that. Um, doesn't tell you much, but on their own website, uh, you can uh, you can see a lot more. So let's just find it here. There we go. Uh, this is the README file of their repository, and um, there's the installation, and then uh, a pretty standard configuration of um, of the the client, uh, which has some options: debug true and uh, connection, uh, reconnect, true, secure, uh, true, and then uh, uh, you set an identity uh, where you enter your username and a uh, password, but not really the password. It's more like a, um, it's more like a um, a token, uh, an open auth token that you that you can obtain, and I'll show you how to do that later in this uh, in this video, but. Um, then you basically connect uh, your client to to the to the channel here, and you can you can enter more channels. Uh, so if you want your bot to connect to more than one channel, then you just enter it. It's an array, so you just an array of strings. Uh, the string name is the uh, the string is the uh, name of the channel. Um, so you just connect, and then uh, you can have this listener. Um, 
which can listen for a number of different events and we'll go into them later they're in the uh, documentation somewhere oh here so let's just open that one in a new window and then get the latest documentations and let's have a look at the configuration basically it's it's what I said that that happens here and you can you can have it uh, connect to other things than your uh, twitch chat uh, it, that's just what it's set to as default so yeah uh, and this is pretty much basically what I've been doing in my app so far um, let's see I have a dot env uh, with my environmental variables and those are the uh, username and password which I'm not going to show you because those are secret so obviously not going to tell you those but uh, we uh, import uh, TMI and I report uh, import my um, my options and the options are just pretty much the option object object that you saw in the um, in the document in the documentation and this is where I use my my uh, environment variables uh, bot username and bot key uh, and then I tell it to connect to this channel on twitch and then I import the options and I use them where do I use them here I just used them as the instantiation of the uh, client object that allows me to connect and then I've been doing some uh, promise stuff this returns a promise and you can uh, you can catch the promises with a then and a, and a catch at the end if something goes wrong you just want the app to exit and the thing I want to do after it connected is just to set a uh, a, a color a, a client color uh, which you can probably see uh, in in your in your uh, right hand chat. Let's just check it, shall we? Um, Firefox. Didn't I just oh, already have it open here? Do Twitch dot TV, and then let's enter my own channel, and then it's obviously not going to show us right now. Ooh, that's uh, okay. <laughs> But out here, uh, the name should be um, should be green out in the in the in the chat out here. So that's what that does basically. All right, that was a picture and picture and picture and picture pictureception. Okay, so just gonna hop back to oh, we can close that one and hop back to the app. So what I did first was I want my client to um, to listen on the uh, listen for the message event, and there are a number of different different events you can listen on. You can also listen on uh, cheers, like if somebody cheers your channel uh, and sends you bits, then you can uh, then you can have a special announcement in chat, or you can even do something else with it, which I'm probably going to get to later. Not sure about that yet, but for now, I just want my bot to react to stuff in chat. Yeah, and uh, what we're doing is we uh, this uh, takes a callback function with four um, four um, what do we call them um, uh, arguments? Uh, channel argument, which is just the name of the channel. Uh, tags, which which is it's the user state object that uh, the Twitch chat. Uh, has so it includes all sorts of different things about the user, uh, the username, the user ID, and and lots of different things, and we'll check that out later. Uh, the message itself, and there's a boolean here, which uh, basically tells us if whoever chatted was the bot itself, and that is why we do this because we don't want the bot to react on itself because that could create some infinite infinite chat loops and we don't want to do that uh, spam ourselves with that so the first thing I do is to check if it's the bot that is chatting and if it is then just return do nothing and then we can just check if the message to lowercase equals uh, hello uh, with a uh, exclamation at the front then we want the bot to say 
in the channel. And this is where we use uh, tags, this uh, user state object. Uh, and it, it has, uh, among other things, the username. So we can just say at username, hey. So when we go into chat and we say, hello. Oh, I'm not connected. There we go. Then the bot replies, hello, or just hi, uh, with, with the username and, and an at uh, in front of it. And that's what gets us this thing that we can see in the debug console down here. Um, that uh, I said hello, and then Floofendorf replied right away. I also did this set interval thing, where I'm uh, getting my bot to, um, to, to say something every five minutes, five times 60 times. Um, what is it? Five, five times 60 times a thousand, that's five minutes. I actually am gonna change this to seven minutes because five minutes, that's a bit too often. Maybe 10, 10 minutes, every 10 minutes. Five minutes, that's very often. So every 10 minutes, uh, the bot basically says in this channel, and when you want to refer to a channel, you have to remember to put in uh, uh, a pound uh, symbol in front or the hashtag and then hey if you like the stream please say hi in chat you can also follow brian on twitter and so on and i wanted to do this uh help command so you can type exclamation help uh in chat and then it'll reply with a list of things that the bot can do for you but i haven't really gotten around to figuring out how to do that yet so let's see what can we make it do Mm, we should probably do something fun with it. I wanted to uh, to make like um, like if uh, oops if message to lowercase equals joke. Then I want it to tell a joke. Just something weird. And to do that, I'm going to use a um, an API for it that delivers jokes. So it's just going to tell us a random joke. Um, and of course, we're going to do dad jokes. I can has dad joke. That's an API. Great. Do we have to send any? I don't think we do. Okay, basically we can send a request to this endpoint here, and that gives us a random bad joke. All right, so let's see how, For, to do that we need um, some fetch tool in, in um, that works with Node.js and ooh, I am actually a bit uncertain if Axios can be used in Node. Should be able to, yeah. HTTP client for browser and Node. Okay, we're just going to use that one then. npm.js Axios. And I bet there is just a simple example somewhere down here. We're just going to install it with npm install axios and then perform a get request and it returns promises. Okay, that should be easy enough. So, npm install axios and oh, that was fast. That's a small package. All right. And then we're going to require it up here. Or maybe we're just going to get get from it. There. Because we only need get for now anyway. Uh, so over here we can say get. And then I need the address. Which was just this one.
and it returns a promise. So let's just uh, see what it gives us. Let's just see what happens here. Uh, load app. And then in chat. Oh, uh, how long have you been live? I've, I've been live only. Hello, uh, Red Code. Thank you for joining. Um, I've been live for um, 20 minutes? No, 15 minutes ish. So uh, welcome and thanks for joining. Um, where are you from? What are you up to? Don't you want to tell us? All right, that's okay. In your own time. But that's India. All right. Uh, hello to India. It's what is it like? Um, 7 p.m. or something like that right now? Isn't it? Not exactly certain. Yeah, okay, 7 p.m., yeah. Kind of 7 p.m., okay. Cool, welcome to the chat. And welcome to my stream. I'm just creating a, a chatbot with a, a small, very, very cool library for uh, Twitch chatbots called TMIJS, uh, which I'm just uh, demonstrating. And I'm just going to do some, some fun stuff with it. Uh, I wanted to create a... Um, a, uh, a function or a command that allows us to to get the bot to tell a joke on command so if you type uh, exclamation point uh, joke in chat then for now at least we should get a some sort of response down here in the terminal so go ahead and try that just exclamation point joke I'm just interested to see what what we're gonna get from this uh, response how, how it looks like what it looks like Or I can just type it myself. Okay. Nothing happened. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Redcode. Uh, Redcode says, keep going, love your streams. Thank you so much. Have you been watching uh, any of the other streams that I made? Um, I save them to YouTube and you can always just go to my YouTube and find them there. I made a playlist for them. It's called Brian, Brian Chats. Uh, but uh, if you've already seen them, then obviously you don't need to. <laughs> um, all right. Joke didn't work. Why didn't it? Maybe we just... All right, let's just be a bit more verbose. Maybe that's why I'm... Maybe that's why it's... It's not really working. So I'm just going to restart my bot. And then it joined. And let's try again. Joke. Oh, here we go. OK, wow, that's a big object. What did we get? Ooh, OK, that's that seems wrong, doesn't it? It's an entire HTML page what is all this okay it's yeah okay 
text HTML. That's not what I want. I want it. Ah. Maybe I need to add like a, a response header. Yeah, that's probably it. So headers. Mm. Oh, content Ooh, response type content type. I can never remember. Let's see. Okay, but this fetch a random joke situation. That's not what it did though. Hmm. Ah, accept, of course. Um, application JSON. Let's just accept that. And then move all the way down here. Restart the application and then let's try again. Joke. Okay, this is a bit better. We get the data object and a whole lot of other things that we don't need, but the data object includes the joke. So, down here we can make response.data.joke should just allow us to um, to, to respond with the joke. So uh, client say channel because we wanted to talk in the channel that is communicated from the uh, argument in the callback up here and we want it to say the joke. So response.data.joke like that. I think that's all we need to do. Yeah, okay. Let's restart it and then let's have a joke. Oh, I hate my chat program over here. It keeps disconnecting me from chat, so. There we go. Okay, how do you make how do you make a water bed more bouncy? You use spring water, of course. Har har hardy har. Okay, red coat. Try you try and, and type joke in in the chat uh, the joke command with the exclamation point and see if we can get any better jokes from this. And then I want to see if I can uh, get it to like a uh, timeout. I want it to uh, to not you, you so you can't just uh, spam it all the time so 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 we fill up chat with with bad jokes uh, so let's give it a timeout uh, some form of um, let's say we create an, a variable up here or an array uh, const timeout or no, no no that needs to be that actually needs to be okay. Um, yeah, we'll just define that there. Okay, if at first you don't succeed, skydiving is not for you. <laughs> oh, they're terrible. Worst jokes ever. I'm going to regret this at some point. But we're going to create this uh, timeout thing here. And then we're going to make a condition down here that says if timeout uh, it, oh, timeout isn't uh, defined already then we can just go ahead and and uh, and spam the the channel with a joke and then we want to set timeout to a timestamp and oh, isn't that date now is it like that oh, oops oops I can never really remember. Date dot now, things like that. Yeah. And then we also want to check if it's nothing, then do that. Or if uh, the timeout is set, so there is a timeout, but it's um, more than five minutes later than the last time it was set, then we can do it again. So let's see. Timeout is more than um, 
How do we get? Ooh. Time out. Let's do this. Uh, time out plus uh, five minutes times 60 seconds times a thousand milliseconds. That's five minutes. Uh, so if time out plus that is more than Am I doing the math right here? Mm. Time out plus that. That is. Ooh, maybe we should. Um. Yeah, okay, uh, date dot now, so we get a new date. So it's if it's more than that, if it's not set, or if uh, the timestamp uh, timeout has been set, but it's more than uh, than now, wait, is that right? Do it, does it have to be less than? Let's test it. Just gonna restart the app and then let's do joke again. Oh, it keeps disconnecting me, of course. Okay, we get a joke and then can we do it again? We can, okay, it's probably because it has to be less than here. Okay, let's just, if you're struggling to think of what to get someone for Christmas. Get them a fridge and watch their face light up when they open it. <laughs> what did the Dorita farmer say to the other Dorita farmer? Cool Ranch. That's an American thing. I don't uh, think that's that's not really something we use in Denmark. All right, let's see if it was less than. I can never really figure out the logic for this. Um, joke. We can get a joke. The great thing about stationary shops is they're always in the same place. That is true, I suppose. Wow, bad joke. Okay, and this time we didn't get to send another one. Okay, great. Seems like it's working now. So that's the first little thing that we've got. Mm-hmm. Probably going to extend this to be an object later that has... Uh, Redcoat says, on what topic do you generally do streams on? Well, um, web development, basically. Um, I do a lot of I do a lot of streaming, uh, or I've, I've just begun streaming, so it's not a lot of streaming, but I, uh, I stream uh, web development, and uh, it's all HTML, CSS, uh, JavaScript, Sometimes I move into some backend stuff. Uh, it doesn't have to be front end all the time. This is backend stuff, so that's uh, that's that, uh, and it's in the node uh, sphere of things. But I'm not afraid to go over into other areas like a PHP or something else. Uh, so I I basically just stream um, what what I think is is fun to 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 work on and i've been doing uh, i've been doing some uh, discussions where i've just talked about how, how to how to decide what architecture your application should have how the moving parts should should get together and i've done a stream where i showed oh uh, what was that i don't even remember that's um that's a bit embarrassing you can find it on my YouTube. So if you just go on YouTube and search for Brian uh, Emilius, then you can find me right there. And there's a uh, playlist. Oh yeah, I made a React.js contact form where I just uh, talked a bit about that. We're not gonna watch that actually. Um, so yeah, you're a JS person. What do you, do you work? Or, or is it like a, um, do you work as a as a web developer or is it more like a hobby for you? Either is okay. I think uh, both is a great thing. There's no, uh, I don't have any fancy feelings for it. So 
I love coding along with documentation. Feels amazing after you get the result. Exactly. Uh, that's one of the things I really love about um, about programming is that you can get uh, immediate responses from from your program. Uh, web dev is my first love. Well, I, I've got to say it's it's a thing that I really love, but it's not my first love. Uh, I started uh, programming on my old Commodore 60, 64. Uh, with I had a, a tape station and and my uh, Commodore uh, uh, workstation where I where I would play some games and then I was like okay this game that I'm playing I keep losing in it so I want infinite lives and then I had to figure out how to give myself infinite lives which meant I had to like uh, hack it and and go into the source code and and uh, find the areas where you set. Uh, three to to three thousand maybe and then you had three thousand lives instead of just three lives that was the uh, c64 assembler was the language back then um and uh, the thing about that is well it was fun to do but you couldn't really share it with anyone and that's not until i got to the point where i had my first pc uh, where I could just, uh, whatever I had made in Visual Basic or whatever programming uh, language, I could just put it on a disk and then share it with my with my uh, pals at school. Uh, but once the internet came around, I'm old enough to remember a time before the internet, or before the World Wide Web anyway. Um, uh, once that came about, then, then all you had to do was just send them a text or send them an email. Uh, check out this link. I just uh, put this up on, on a web hotel that I just made. What do you think of it? And sh that whole thing about sharing your, your, the things you're making, that is, that's something that's really, uh, that, that I really love. Uh, so definitely um, my, my second love. I'm doing undergrad. They first taught me C and C++, but it was kind of meh. Yeah, yeah, I get that. It's a powerful programming language, and the fact that you understand some of it makes you more um, capable of of making good decisions when you when you architecture something, even something as simple as a small website. Uh, but then I learned JS, and the whole ecosystem of JS was just irresistible to me. There is a massive ecosystem. I one hundred percent agree. It's a big. Uh, messy fire of uh, bonfire of, of different things that that uh, some of them are fantastic and f a few of the things out there are really crappy but that's the whole thing I, that I love about it is that you, that you can just go and explore and see what people made and and uh, the response that you get from the stuff that you make is just so instantaneous so I love it absolutely I get I get what you're saying um, so you uh, you did you are doing your undergrad. Do they teach any web technologies at your at your college or university? Or do they stick to the the hardcore programming languages such as C and C plus plus? And not right now. Uh, I know in, in Denmark, which is where I'm from, uh, they don't really uh, do much uh, web development. They do some uh, PHP and C, uh, but uh, and some C Sharp, but it's not the main uh, focus that they have. It's more an algorithmic focus that you learn um, stuff like big O notation and, and all that weird stuff. I, I teach web development at a tech college and we're doing uh, just web development and not all the other things. So what, what a web developer can do when they're done with us is just to um, make websites, make web, web applications. They move directly to machine learning stuff. Oh yeah, the hardcore stuff. That's because you you have the core, the core understanding of programming from C and C++. Uh, and and you need that algorithmic understanding and the the mathematical approach to to a problem uh, once you want to move into machine learning. So that is if, if that's the path that your university is taking, then they're doing the right thing. Absolutely. Uh, but I definitely get why you like uh, JavaScript 
it's just a fun language. It's a messy language, but it's also a really fun language. And once you understand it, uh, you want to learn AI and machine learning in 2020. Well, it's doable. Uh, there's a lot of... That's the thing that over the past... Probably something like uh, the past five years, uh, there was, there's was there been a lot of uh, milestones set in machine learning and, and uh, artificial intelligence. Um, uh, meaning that there are so many uh, there's so many tools out there now that are easily accessible so it's definitely doable to just uh, jump onto those tools and 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 do something fun with it um i keep seeing people on twitter just uh, creating their own uh, face id apps so they can log into their own website using their face id and stuff like that which they written themselves using these libraries and these toolings uh so that's that's definitely accessible it's a good goal to have. It's a world of programming that I think is going to be very busy for the coming years. So it's also a good career choice. Definitely. Right. What should we what should we make? Uh, what should we make the bot do now? We've made it tell a joke. There's been more than five minutes. Maybe I can get it to tell a joke again. We need a joke. Yeah, we could. When my, when my wife told me to stop impersonating a flamingo, I had to put my foot down. Yeah. <laughs> By the looks of how 2020 is going, I don't know what the future holds. Maybe Jurassic Park will open again. Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's been it's been a weird uh, it's been a weird couple of months. Um, I'm I'm a teacher by profession, and I haven't been allowed to to go into work. So we've we've had to have our classes pretty much like we're we're doing now with this live stream uh, that we've recorded video instructional videos for our students, and then we've just thrown assignments at them, and that's pretty much all you can do. Uh, so yeah. But we were just told the other day that we are probably going to be allowed to get back into class for uh, uh, for a few of the a few of the students. Some of the classes are allowed to come back to school soon uh, under strict conditions, such as they have to be two meters apart and we have to wash our hands every two hours or so, and there has to be uh, alcohol al al alcoholic gel. Uh, you know, hand wash stuff uh, in every room and, and all sorts of different rules uh, that we have to follow. And that's good that we have to follow these rules, but we're only allowed to to let our students back into school if we can follow the, those rules. So that's going to be good. My motivation to go to go increase when I got to know that TensorFlow is in JS. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's one of the toolings that I was that I was that I had in mind when I said it before. TensorFlow is just an amazing tool, and the uh, the JavaScript SDK for for TensorFlow is is amazing and it's fun to play with. You, you can do so many fun things. Um, so definitely, that's a uh, and it has such a low entry point. I mean, you don't even have to be. Uh, uh, you don't he have to be a computer science major to uh, to to understand what's going on. Uh, you just download some uh, models and then you you tell your like uh, is this a cat? Uh, a model that can recognize images of cats and then just make uh, put a picture of a cat in front of your uh, of your webcam and then it says yes if it's a cat or no if it's not. Uh, or you can just uh, have it look at at the images on the internet and then index which of these images are cats. Uh, such a low entry point and, and really, really fun to play with. Definitely. Okay. Do we have any ideas? What do we want our bot to do now? We've made it tell a joke by checking an API. What else can we do? I need ideas 
from you guys. Oh, and thanks for the follow, by the way. Um, red code, uh, one, two, three, four, five. That's not a safe password, by the way, one, two, three, four, five. Um, and thank you for the follow. Let's check out um, Nightbot. Nightbot is this. Um, oh, I closed Firefox. Still. Uh, Nightbot is this uh, online bot that you can use in in a in a in various programs. You can use it on Twitter. You can use it on no, not Twitter. You can use it on your um, uh, Twitch. You can use it on Discord. You can use it in Slack. You can use it on YouTube. And it does a bunch of different things for you. There's like spam protection. Oh, we could do that. Spam protection, we probably need to explore the documentation. Um, there's some um, TMIJS proxy. That's not the one I wanted. Okay. There we go. I don't know why I didn't bookmark this. I probably should have. There we go. Bookmark. Right. Um Commands, probably under commands, we can ban somebody. Can we do like a timeout there? Timeout username on channel for X seconds. Okay. <laughs> Reason for the timeout. Uh, username length. Okay, so it takes. And you can set. Okay, that's just. Five minutes in seconds. Okay. Time out for five minutes. So we need some sort of thing that records timestamps for whenever somebody talks. Let. We're just going to make an object that. Ooh, this is going to be a tricky one. That's a good thing. I like that. How can we integrate it into other apps? Oh, okay. Um, Red code says, I was just going to say that. How can we integrate it into other apps? Um, we probably need um, somewhere up here connection. There's in the in the documentation somewhere in the documentation. Let's just find it real quick. Um, configuration, and you can set it to connect to other things that you're uh, that you then your Twitch chat. Then you need like uh, what's the Discord uh, server that you want to to access, and which port should you be using for it? Um, that's probably how you do it. And then you need a username and a password for a Discord account. And then you just enter those into your into as your username and password here. Then it connects to to uh, to that uh, to that application. I think it's just the same for for pretty much all of them. You need a Google user, and then you can just enter your username and password for that Google user. And then in connection, you enter which server it should connect to. YouTube has a chat server, uh, which I don't know the address of, but I'm pretty sure we can Google that. And then you just uh, have it connect there. It should be that simple. But the standard configuration uh, for the connection object here is that it just connects to Twitch, which is why I haven't written any of that. Uh, like you can see here, the default is RSC WS uh, chat Twitch TV. But you can set it to anything, so just uh, I'm just gonna mock it. Uh, 
I don't know, chat.youtube.com, something like that. That should probably do it and then the port that it has to access and it's I don't know if it's an IRC port but there's definitely something going on that you can do with the port uh, for magic magic stuff all right that seems uh, that seems a good use of twitch bot to that to chat in discord yeah exactly uh, if you can just have the same bot it can do most of the same things in in uh, in discord that you can do in in uh, in your Twitch channel and you have a community going where there's the Twitch channel that you that you stream on and then you have a Discord for all your followers and interested people uh, and they have the same bot there and it acts the same way and it's just the same thing you know. Can we use it in YouTube live streams? I'm pretty sure we can. Um, I'm pretty sure we can. Uh, let's see if, if Nightbot can then I'm fairly certain that integrations Nightbot in Discord. Uh, Moxie. Okay. That one can can connect to Discord. I don't know if we can do it in YouTube live streams because it requires the Discord is an IRC chat uh, program, uh, and uh, TMIJS requires uh, IRC. It, that's what it works. That's the protocol it works on. So. Uh, it has to be an IRC chat, and I don't know what YouTube uses. But it's worth trying out sometime, I suppose. Alright, what were we doing? We were checking out the command section, and we're looking for the timeout thing here. Where was it? So we need to check whenever somebody whenever somebody is chatting, then we need to add their ID and a timestamp. Yeah. I'm just going to have Okay, I'm going to make an object uh chatters that is going to look something like this. Uh, chatters. That's gonna be that's gonna be an array actually, and then we're gonna have an object with the ID of the user and uh, timestamps is an array, and then we have like a, some timestamps and I'm just gonna save the, the two timestamps it's not really interesting what they're saying it's more when they said it because then we can set a limit if this one is too close to this one this one was the first time they chatted and this is the second one so we just need the last two of the um, of the timestamps and then compare this one to this one and if it's within a certain time then they're spamming and we don't want that and then we're gonna give them a timeout um, you want to learn SVG animations to make interesting loaders for web pages that I make. Uh, SVG is an SVG animations is probably uh, one of the best things you can throw yourself into if you have a creative mindset. Uh, you can make such great things. There's uh, there's a really uh, oh who is it that does those? Isn't it? Um, Let's just check out my Twitter. Welcome to my Twitter. Ooh, let's see how many followers am I up on now. I made it to 100. That is amazing. I woke up this morning and I had 60 followers and then I did one tweet that uh, told me that my new goal is 100 followers and when was that? That was um, that was eight a.m. and it's now uh, almost four p.m. So forty new followers in half a day. That's amazing. Wow. Okay, sidetrack. <laughs> that wasn't what we were here for. We were here for. I think it is this woman uh, who does 
some really fun animations with uh, yeah Alice Biddle. I think that's her. I'm fairly certain it's her who makes some really cool uh, SVG animations. Or otherwise, you can check out Sarah Sweden. Uh, but she makes some some pretty cool stuff too. I'm, I'm don't actually remember if it's SVG animations. But one of them are. So check check those pages out. Uh, and you can definitely find some cool resources on, on how to do some cool stuff with with uh, with SVG animations. And you can do so many great things. And actually if it's something you specialize in, uh, there's a niche because it's not something that a lot of people are really good at. There are a lot of good people, but we need like really great people. Right now for start, I use undraw.co for drawings, definitely. And just do do those fill up animations that, that like draws the line and lines and stuff. That's a good way to start. Uh, and you have some really cool drawings also. Uh, I've got a great friend that is a designer and he uh, he's making like my um, my my avatar he's making it for in vector and then I'm gonna animate it using uh, SVG animations CSS and SVG and JavaScript basically 100 followers onwards and upwards thank you so much um, yeah that was it that was a bit of a milestone for me 100 followers <gasps> that's amazing all right back to work so I'm going to create these things whenever we have um, somebody chatting and I'm going to do it down here so I'm just gonna call uh, chatter check and we're gonna send uh, channel tags and message no we're not gonna send message we don't need message actually we just need do we need channel email? Yeah, we probably need channel. Uh, I'm just gonna send channel and jacks tags onto that, and then we can define it down here. Function chat chatter check. There we go. Oops, like that. All right. So we've got our chatters up here. And that's an array uh, and it's just an empty array to begin with we don't need that stuff there so uh, I want to uh, map it do no I need to filter it so uh, get ID is mm, tax dot ID I think Ooh, I need to check what's what goes on here console log uh, tags I'm not certain what that object looks like so I'm just gonna check out over here uh, test yeah okay what have we got badge info ID there we go that's apparently my ID um, and do we have oh user ID that's the one I want that's the one there and do we have like a timestamp somewhere hmm there's no timestamp where do we get that Maybe it's in message then. So let's send message along. And let's check it out down here. And then let's see how that looks. Okay, that just sends us that one. I really would like the timestamp. Why am I not allowed to see that? 
Hmm. That annoys me. Oh, no. TMI sent timestamp. There we go. That's the timestamp. Okay. So we don't need the message. Where is it? Here. Okay, so we need a user ID. Where was it? User ID, that's the one we need. And then we need TMI sent TS, that one. Those are the ones we need from tax. Okay. So, want to learn DS and algorithms, but then they are of no use to me for front end and except for a little matter of interviews, which is, which for the life of me, I can't get my head around it. Oh yeah, uh, algorithm interviews for front end developers or just web developers uh, overall, it, they're, they're just ridiculous. Um, I think they're a plague and I think they should be abolished. Why not work on, on an actual uh, web application project, just a small web application project uh, together, uh, the interviewer and the interviewee, uh, just work on that together and then you get a good idea of how you're working, even how you would work together. Uh, so that would be a much better interview process, uh, in my opinion anyway. I, do, I don't get why people do those algorithm things. Um, in interviews, it's just uh, because you can you can memorize these stuffs, uh, these things, and it doesn't really tell you anything about uh, how you are as a programmer solving a real world problem. Uh, so that's a good point. Um, definitely don't want to, yeah. I would if if you want to be a, a web developer, don't don't bother with it. It's not uh, it's not worth your time. Pretty much. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, we have chatters, and I want to check if the user ID wasn't it? The user ID is already in it so we need to um, we need to loop over and get the child property of a of an array let's see how can we do that we can use uh, we can just use um, map shall we use map um, chatters map Then we want to return Oh yeah, we can do it that way. That's okay, this is actually not so bad. So we just want to check if the user dot ID matches um tax user ID. So first we're checking if there already is a user with the ID recorded in our chatter thing. I think you're distracting you quite a lot from the project, but it's my first time on your chat, so pardon me. That is absolutely no problem at all. That's that's the reason why I'm live streaming. It's just I'm just having fun with some programming, and then uh, you know it's it's just a side pet project. It's not important at all. And uh, the main thing of this is just me interacting with with uh, you guys watching. So so don't feel bad about distracting me. That's perfectly fine. Uh, and and I want I want to be I want to be I want these questions I want to talk with you so so don't don't at all mind your questions that just keep shooting, and I'll just uh, whenever there's not much going on in chat then I'll just return to the project and just do stuff. Uh, so so don't, don't worry, it's all good. Uh, so now we can ask if there is a user if user. Then we want to get into 
Ooh, how do we do that? Okay, let's just see if it works first. And what we get here, just one step at a time. We start the bot and test. Oh wait, this won't work. This will never work. If there isn't a user, then I want to add that to, yeah, okay. Chatters, push, oops, push. Oh wait, oh yeah, I can do that f the first time, that's okay. So I want to push this object where we say ID is uh, tags user ID. Uh, oops, not like that. And then what was the other one? That was timestamps. And that's an array. And the first array is going to be um, tags. And then what was it? It was TMI sent TS. TMI sent TS. Like so. Okay. And then let's just console log chatters. There. So restart. And chat something. And then, oop, empty array. Ready? What does user look like? Up here. Console log user. I'm going to write test a lot in chat today. Don't mind me. Oh, it's still empty. Oh, okay. Uh, if. Right, it's just an empty array, of course. So we need to check if it is an array with objects in it and if it isn't then let's do that thing and then we get beautiful okay i am not happy about this being a string this over here is okay if it's a string but this one should not be a string so we're going to parse it as an integer nice and dirty See what happens now. Perfect. Okay. Um, if there is a user already, okay, we can delete this one. If there already is a user, then we want to add. Uh, to the timestamp thing. So we need to see uh, user. That's an. Oh, wait, chatters. Chatters, and we need to find. No, that's not going to work. see uh, red code says I wish I could get away without learning DS and algorithm but mostly uh, most Indian colleges if you want to get in uh, in good IT and software companies you need to know them and also we don't have that many web developer related companies here so you can't just think that I'm gonna go to that company <laughs> no yeah I am um, I thought that um, India has this, like uh, the Asian Silicon Valley, and that's in India, isn't it? Uh, not actual Silicon Valley, but more like a, a hub of, of big tech companies that exist in India, doesn't it? But I have no idea what those companies do if they're like... Um, hardcore software companies that make uh, native uh, 
native stuff or or what This is really fun. I can I can just program and look at my at my chat at the same time here in my console. That's pretty funny. So if user does have a link, that means we've got a single user object, but we want to go into, we probably have to do something like this again. Uh, they'll want D as an algorithm, so yeah, definitely. Um, I suppose for those, those kinds of companies, you would be doing very little uh, front end D stuff, uh, stuff that, that sort of resembles front end stuff, which is more like, uh, user interface programming, uh, but to do that in in, in native uh, style programming, and I'm not talking about just Electron apps or React Native. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about uh, doing stuff in 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 native programming languages uh, or via the uh, the uh, device SDKs, uh, Swift and uh, Android SDK and stuff like that. You you need to know more about uh, memory management and stuff like that. So I, I can see why that uh, why that would be a requirement there. But for web developers, not needed. Don't need it. Uh, hopefully, we break the system quickly. Yeah, there are some, uh, there are some, there are some ways uh, to this. Uh, things are happening, uh, so hopefully. getting a bit of a problem here. Is that because I didn't save it? Mm. This just pushes a new chatter into the um, into the chatters array, a new a new uh, object. But if there already is a user, then I need to get that user. And how can we do that? We can use the map again, I suppose. Let's try chatters map. Um, yeah, let's just do the same thing we did before. Uh, user dot id matches we already have user so why would I do that but I need to replace it so I need to find the index of it how do we get the index of an object I should know this stuff I've not been teaching my students for far too long uh, JavaScript get index of array with objects, something like that, of the object inside an array, okay, yeah, so if you're looking for something like that, you want to get index one because it's that one, okay, uh, let's see, a find index, find index, okay, That's a new one for me. Great. And what are we doing? Uh, find index. Uh, okay. U user. User ID. 
equals tax user ID. Perfect. So now we have the index of it. So now we can say chatters uh, index. And then we want to get the property uh, timestamp timestamps and push a new timestamp into that and that's just uh, like before parse int um, tax TMI sent TS like that all right this should work let's see Okay, we get that one and then whoa okay we died I have to go I'm helping my mom with dinner tonight but I will catch up on your stream after you've finished and stay safe you stay safe too and thank you so much for joining I think actually I'll just be uh, signing off for now and then continue this chat another day I was just making an impromptu thing today uh, but uh, thank you for hanging out it was it was really fun and uh, I hope you stay safe too and enjoy your dinner.